But I was gonna tell you, you need to go and hire a Seth Rogen. You just gotta, you, you just gotta like yeah. amp up the. <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, we're gonna roll on this. Uh, next, uh, yeah. Go for it. Hey, I see Mark. Oh my God. Hey, come on in. Welcome to the show. Room. What do you think about this? I know a dude who bases his life on wombats. Good to see you, man. Is he even happy about the, uh, the keynote? Yeah. This is awesome. Close the door. Yeah. All right, Clayton, what's on your mind? Uh, what is this? All right, who's first? Hey, this is just like my living room, is or my <laughs> dream of what my living room would be like. So I have one question um, here that, are you for or against cats having human names? Ben, are you putting questions in people's hands here? Yes. I'm excited to learn about what you guys are doing now with, with Jedi. You know, that's a great new win for, for Microsoft. That Jedi RFP and all the work that we've had to, to put in, the amount of innovation that we've had to do in order to have, you know, when you start with, you know, completely air gap, air gap data center, right. all the way out to having to have a data center that's in a forward position that someone's carrying on their back. You know, just that diversity of what we have to be able to deliver with security, with all the management, with the availability, it is forcing us to innovate in ways that we never would have innovated that quickly had it not been an opportunity like Jedi to push us forward. A three foot sub is enough food for how many people? Uh, me. I heard that you just on the fly set up WBD. Yes, yeah, it's, um, it's a lot of traveling, so I was traveling back uh, to London uh, one evening, and I saw that the uh, WVD had gone. Yeah. Uh, well, that's preview at this stage. Okay. So it was a couple of months back. So I looked at the YouTube videos and followed the tutorials on the website, and uh, bought the Wi-Fi pass on the airplane and set up WVD so on a plane over the Atlantic. I got it up and running in about four or five hours. So I think the most impressive thing about that is you actually had Wi-Fi working on the plane. Most part, yeah. <laughs> Terrible latency, so, but we got there so, again. So you set it up, though. You actually then uh, streaming uh, down to your PC on a plane. Yep. It's as simple and as easy as what we as what we say it is. It absolutely works. Yeah. From Bruges. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I, we, we we spent a weekend in Bruges in April. Yeah. I ate a lot of candy. So, uh, Brad, I want to ask you the question most important to my dear heart that I've wanted to ask you for a while. What are you doing for Swole Culture and Tech? Swole Culture and Tech? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to set the example. Do you like panda bears? They're like my favorite animal and like everything that in my life kind of revolves around them in a sense. I was to do a project in like fourth grade and we're supposed to choose an animal to do it on. So I was Googling uh, back in the day and I found, I stumbled upon, upon a panda bear, but my teacher gave me like grizzly bear or something like that, brown bear. Ever since then, everything in my life just kind of rolled. You might not know this, they have six fingers actually. One of the sixth one is like their palm. I'm I get to go home smarter now, that's awesome. Yeah. I want to know if you were in a hair metal band, what would it be called uh, if you had hair first? It'd be broken code. Broken code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have one, it's detonation chamber after uh, ATP. Who does your hair? My wife. All right, I do my own. <laughs> Can you tell? Uh, no, it's probably as easy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, um, like through your career, um, if there was anything personally that you dealt with that was really difficult and mm. what there was that you leaned on to help you get through that. That's a good question. When I started in the industry, I started on the front lines of technical support, taking phone calls. I remember working graveyard shifts. As I think about the biggest risk and the biggest thing that made me nervous, it was actually coming to Microsoft in 2003. You know, so we uprooted our family, we came to a new company, I didn't know anybody here. Yeah. And that's pretty terrifying when you do that. Right. Um, and then I was taking over a project in what was SMS that had been troubled. Um, and so I get to Microsoft and nobody knew who I was. I couldn't hire people because, you know, people didn't know, am I going to be a good leader or am I not right. going to be a good leader? But it was just like one hire at a time, one decision at a time. What's the most ridiculous fact you know? The most ridiculous fact that I know. Wombats have a backwards facing pouch. Say that again? <laughs> because they're diggers. Yeah, where did you learn that? Where did that even come from? <laughs> that, is, that is some All fact right, to pull So forward. what's the most ridiculous fact that you know? <sighs> How do you have the time during the week with all your meetings and to still reach out to all our customers? That just amazes me. How do you find the time for that? If you go back to when I was a program manager, just an individual contributor. For me, I learned there that having that connection with customers and our field is the best way that I could get signal coming into me so that I could understand what was needed. 
and it's just stuck with me since I was a program manager back in 1995. It's so like I specifically make time to do it. One thing I'm curious about, you've done a lot of these ship rooms, met a lot of great customers around the world. What's the common theme that you see that uh, organizations are successful in their digital transformation? You have to have a leader mm -hmm. who has a vision and has the ability to push, in some cases, pull the organization forward. That's number one. Okay. And then number two, that they have to have a culture where they're, they're, they're able to have that growth mindset and, and, and push the whole organization forward. You know, uh, Microsoft announced the new Intune MAM conditional launch feature. For MTD. And yeah. you demoed it on stage on yeah. Monday. In this world of BYO, increasingly users are saying, listen, I love the fact that IT wants to protect the corporate data and the corporate assets on my phone, but I don't want to have taken over my entire phone. Right. Now, there's all this value that an MTD like Lookout brings into the equation. And what we've now been able to do is bring that value and apply it even in a world where IT doesn't have to take over the phone. They can do it in a mam only world. You know, you and I have talked about this. There are millions of devices waiting for this. Right. And then integrating with Defender ATP just makes it even better. If you could give one piece of advice for personal development, what would that be? Mm, know what's important for you and then make time for that. It goes into your calendar. You make time for that. And if you do that, then you spend time on the things that are most important for you. I'm hearing you say be intentional. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Great. On the things Thank that are you. personal, just not on work. Right. So for me, I know what's important for me. You know, um, we have five children, two are married, we have three grandchildren. Being clear on that and being clear with the people around me that they know the important, the most important thing in my life is my family. Uh, I can still be a workaholic. I can be incredibly competitive, but I make time for that that is important for me. I think it's important for a mother and father to have dinner with their children. Yes. And so, you know, I am always out of the office to get home to have dinner with my family. Where I come from, we don't usually dream, right? We're not allowed to dream and stuff. So you don't usually think high and stuff. So my question for you is, what motivates you every day? What really inspires you? For me, I, I, I just love to build things and I love to, I love to achieve. Mm -hmm. Like to me, there's just great satisfaction to me, like checking off that box that I got through my to-do list. Mm -hmm. And so what drives me more than anything is, is you know, setting a goal and then be able to achieve that goal, but doing it in a way where, where I have high integrity. Mm -hmm. So I hope when, when all is said and done, people would say things like, Brad achieved his goals, mm -hmm. and he achieved the goals of the organization with integrity. And if that's what people say about me, mm -hmm. then I'm a happy, happy person. I believe you always face opposition. How do you handle that? There have been times when we have hard problems to solve. Sometimes you feel like they're impossible. The only way you solve it is you just push. You know, we'll use the word, you just, you just keep grinding. You just grind against that problem and you just continue to you hit it, you hit it, you hit it, you hit it, and you're relentless. Is there any such thing as too much with an Aloha shirt? Yes, <laughs> and you cross the line. I have a closet full of so, Aloha shirts. I'm Disney, I have tiki bars, I mean, yeah, Renaissance man. Broad question. Um, uh, announcement of uh, Endpoint uh, uh, Manager. Um, what, what's your What's your vision? You know, five years from now. You know, I'm still a config manager guy using the old school console. Okay, where do you want to take this five years down the road? Do you want to um, deprecate this console, um, or do you want to have essentially a guy, old old school guy like me? You know, fully uh, on board with endpoint manager. Endpoint management, modern management, modern security is all based built on cloud intelligence. Okay, okay. so that is kind of the the trend. Okay, now in terms of endpoint manager, you know, we have this combination of some things can run on-prem, some in the cloud, and you're going to make the choice on, on what you want that mix to be. Okay. Some organizations may have most of it running on-prem, some may okay. go entirely to the cloud, but with endpoint manager, you yeah. can make that choice. Okay. And just, you know, do it whatever makes the most sense for you and your organization. But one of the other things that, um, briefly, that you want to announce from uh, our perspective as customers that you're most proud of this year yeah. at, at Ignite. We put out there called the productivity score. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm actually the program manager on this one. A lot of that idea came from, from customer visits that I was doing. I came back and I pulled the team together. And I said, listen, we gotta go do this. As a leader of a user group, an IT Pro user group, what do you see the role of the user group community uh, to promote your technologies now and in the future? One thing I'd love to see more of is how do you take the feedback and feed it back into us? And so how do you collect input feedback direction questions and then have that be a direct line of signal coming in us so that we understand better what it is that we're missing and what it is that we need to do. Do you see any resemblance with Vin Diesel on yourself? Me? So are you asking, does Vin Diesel look like me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite animal and what can I as an IT pro or dev learn from that animal? Mm, my favorite animal. It's gotta be a human. 
<laughs> Which would you rather meet in a bathroom, alien or predator? I notice there's a lot more men at the conference than women. Yeah, and if you, you know, see like throughout the years if that will increase. As, a, as an industry, we have to make sure that we have the broadest perspectives in the engineering teams and the, in the, in the teams that are doing work in customers because when you have that broad perspective, you're just going to have better ideas, you're going to have better approaches and so. I enjoyed the, the session yesterday about workspace analytics, uh -huh. so I hope we get to turn that on soon. Yeah, it's a big deal. I really it's, enjoyed It's that. amazing to kind of get that view of how you're working and how you, you know, yeah. you're being more efficient. Can you be more efficient? That's nice. Yeah. Well, I would like to ask you if you want to have a quantum computer that works or a pizza every day. <laughs> is, this, is it a meat lover's pizza? Um, I guess you can choose. Well, the Cubans are going to have to wait. Okay. But you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I would actually love to have a quantum computer that works. And I want it now. Not in 2023, but now. All right, now you. Which one do you want? Pizza? Uh, no, I think I'll also go for the quantum computer. Okay. That would be a really cool thing to have. You can always order pizza from the quantum computer. Yeah, exactly. Microsoft has a long history of enterprise computing and um, private computing. And the things you did in enterprise computing, you could now tell a lot of them were more or less legacy. Now, you mean, what, you mean kind of on-prem versus cloud? Yeah. And you have, like, you, you used a lot of time to shift yourself and create new stuff. There is a connection and you're better than everyone else in that. Yep, in a hybrid world. <laughs> yes. But where do you see that enterprise field in five to ten years? Well, for large enterprises, if you were to ask in five years, is everything going to be in the cloud? No. You're mm -hmm. going to have a lot of stuff on-prem. For these large enterprises, you know, you're still going to have a lot of capabilities and a lot of needs that will run. You know, when I say on-prem, you may actually be running an ISP in the cloud. But the trend is towards SaaS, but enterprises have the complexity. And then you've got, you know, you, you've got regulations, you've got, you know, rules around uh, data sovereignty. And so, you know, you're going to have to have solutions that allow you to be able to span across multiple clouds, including your own cloud and your own data center. And that's what we're building with Azure and the things that we're doing with Azure Arc. Likewise, on your endpoints, you know, we think about most organizations are going to have a combination of cloud services. Mm -hmm. Those cloud services will attach to, to things that they're still running on-prem, and that's how we're going to bring the intelligence and the insights down from the cloud. So we think hybrid is going to be around for most organizations for many, many years. Do you watch soccer? I love soccer. Great. What's your favorite team? You know, so uh, so right now we're we're uh, we're big Seattle fans because we're playing for the championship this week. How about you? Yeah, my favorite team is Liverpool. But I hear you guys don't have a website. You can't string three W's together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about WVD. Awesome. It is my vision that in 5, 10, maybe 15 years, everybody will have their desktop in the cloud. Well, we'll you have know, a desktop I in the cloud. I think the, the move to having a, they call it a cloud PC, that is a trend that we know is going to accelerate. Every customer I talk with, they don't want to have to deal with managing the VDI and the infrastructure on prem they all want it up in the cloud. The SMB community, I think, can sometimes feel left out a little bit, right? Because like Microsoft is such an enterprise focus and when it, I heard that you were going to be taking over, like the heading up for this product, Microsoft 365 Business, and trying to solve some of these uh, problems that we had, I was like really blown away. I thought that was really cool. So this is a SKU that I've been like highly excited about, especially since the release of Conditional Access. Probably not really able to reveal too much, but what else can we expect to see in the next year for Microsoft yeah. 365 Business? Yeah. So one of the new uh, accountabilities that I have is, is is doing the engineering work to to prove out that value, make sure you have the right value for SMB customers and the partners that service SMB customers. But as I think about our growth opportunity and a, a market that I don't think we have served as well as we need to, because every SMB customer knows they need more security, yep. but they don't have the expertise to do it. And so right. that's where we're focused at more than any place. You are ripped, man. Uh, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, well, how, how does, what, what's Brad's workout routine? You know, because man, I try to stay in shape. You know, several days a week. You know, eat right. But man, I, I'm, you know, I want to have guns like you someday. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> just consistency, hard work. Okay. Lots of protein shake. When you're going to support Chromebook on Intune? As soon as they let me, I would do it tomorrow if they give me access to the APIs. Three key takeaways of device management yeah. um, from what you talk about two days ago. One, you know, with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, you have this spectrum now. You know, you're not all in the cloud, you're not all on-prem. You can decide how much you want to be in the cloud but with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. You now have, mm -hmm. you can, you can, you know, there's just multiple colors of gray in there, and you can just, you know, do what you want to do. That's number one. Number two, the most important thing is I think about device management going forward is you have to bring intelligence from the cloud to automate 
and do things you know in, in a much faster and in a much more secure way. That'd be the second thing. And then the third thing is you want to do this in a way where your users have this incredible experience where they feel like they work for a company that is modern and innovative. And so I think the experience you put into their hands and device management has a big part of that. You want to make sure it's just this incredible engaging experience because then your employees are going to be more loyal, they're going to be more productive, and the, the whole organization will just be better. Microsoft developed so much that we as a partner are so busy. How do you cope with everything? Yeah, you assume that I keep up with everything. Yeah, I assume, yeah. Yeah, and then you know, I, I, I sit on the Microsoft 365 leadership team and I get a chance to see the big things we're working across all of Microsoft 365. So I get to see the big meta view and then I get to see the individual things that we're doing across Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And, and with that, I try to keep up. And then the other thing that I do is, is uh, about every eight weeks, I'll go spend a week on the road just visiting with customers and partners. Okay. And that's how I stay in touch and in tune with what customers are asking us to do. You know, I've been a fan of uh, ShipBroom. But I have to ask you a question about superpowers. Yeah. So which is a better superpower? Being able to disappear or mathematics? You know, you couldn't get invisibility without math. <laughs> What keeps you up at night? Uh, other than anxiety and stress, from a work-related perspective, the mm -hmm. things that I worry about are, are we building our solutions um, fast enough to be able to keep up with what customers are needing us to do? I feel good about the security. I feel good about the resiliency. I feel good about the ability for it to scale. I just worry, are we? do we have enough listening coming in? Do we have enough sensors coming in so we really understand what it is that you want? Mm -hmm. And then build it fast. So you went to Shake Shack last Multiple night. Multiple times, yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, and you tweeted about you, it. You, did, you didn't meet us. What? I tell you why. I follow you on Twitter uh. for sure, but I um, checked the little uh, box where I get notified each time you do a Twitter. And that day it was crazy. <laughs> so I shut it off and on the next morning I saw your tweet, hey, I'm going to Shake Shack, who Let wants to follow me? To so, you. Yeah. <laughs> where do you where do you find the mobility to to add to the ecosystem? Like like I'm managing Apple products now. Mm -hmm. Didn't think I'd be doing that in a all Microsoft shop, but Microsoft has seemed to open that up, mm -hmm. especially with Intune, and that's been that's I'll been give you a fascinating data point. We are actually the fourth or fifth largest Mac shop on the planet internally at Microsoft. The vision behind Microsoft 365 is, you know, empower your users to work on any device, how, where, and when they want. So, you know, if they want to use an Apple device, absolutely, let's make sure it's a great experience. And that's the vision behind Microsoft 365. It literally is, let your users work how, where, and when they want, and we'll make sure it's well managed, it's well secured, and it's a beautiful productivity experience. I work a lot with Intune. Yeah. I love the product. Um, I was a bit, um, when uh, Desktop Analytics came to Config man Manager, uh, when can I see it available in Intune? And will it be the same kind of product or will it be something new for Intune only? Good question. And part of your question is, why did we put do Desktop Analytics on Config Manager before Intune? Yeah. And that was all about, you know, um, putting those Desktop Analytics where the customers are at today. Today, you know, we, we announced yesterday that, um, you know, we now have, have 190 million devices that are being managed by uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Far and away, like, you know, 95% of the PCs in the world are still being managed by Config Manager, and it hasn't moved to that MDM layer. In five years, where do you see identity and security, you know, what's important? What's the most important thing five years from now? If I kind of step back and I think about identity, management, and security, they're going to continue to blend together because they have to be working hand in hand with each other in order to, 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 to provide the level of security and protection that organizations need. And they're all going to be driven by cloud intelligence. Well, well, matter of fact, let's do the uh, predator handshake. What's that? You know, the one. Oh, yeah, here we go. Arnold. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> See you now here.